Hi everyone. So in this session, we are going to see how we can get historical data. When it comes to historical data, you might need different types of data. Like you might need five minute candle data, 10 minute candle data, maybe daily candle data. So today we will see how we can get every type of data. So before moving forward, you have to watch our previous video in which I have told you how you can get the access token. So that's your first step that is you need the access token before moving forward to getting the historical data. So here I've imported few libraries, like I've imported the FIRES API to make the FIRES object. Then I'm using the OS library to get the current working directory, then pandas to make a data frame. So whatever data we will be getting from the server, we will try to convert it into a tabular data. Then date time to deal with dates. So first I'm importing, I'm getting the file. Uh, so I have made a file called as access.txt. In this I have the access token. So I'm just importing, opening this file and just opening all the uh, content that we have in this file into my Jupyter notebook. So I'm storing it in a variable that is access token. Then I have my client ID and I've made an object of fires uh, so that I can do the remaining things that I want to do. So before moving forward, let me show you the documentation. So here we have the fires official documentation. In this, you have to go to history. In history, you have to click on Python. So from here, I've just copied these two lines of code. That is data and this fires history, uh, fires dot history data. I'll just copy this and I'll just paste it here. And let's try to understand all the things that we have to send to receive the historical data. So let's read the documentation first. So these are all the things. So first is the symbol. So in symbol, you have to specify what stock you want. You know, you want infi stock, you want SBI stock, and this is the format that you need to specify if you want the historical data of that stock. First, you have to specify the exchange that is NSE colon, then the stock ticker name that is SBIN for SBI uh, for infi it's INFY, then EQ, which represents that it's an equity stock. So this is the format that uh, you need to follow if you uh, want the data. Then the next uh, argument is resolution. Now in resolution, you have to specify what candle you want you know you want a daily candle you want it a minute minute by minute candle you want two minute candle what type of candle data you want you have to specify in this resolution so if i go back to vs code first is symbol so in this case i have specified as bin this is correct second is resolution now if i want daily data daily candle data so i have to specify a d suppose if i want minute by minute data so i have to specify one okay one should be a string it's not an int uh, i want 10 minute data i have to specify 10 as a string okay so this is how i have to specify uh, so I want daily data, then date format. Now, what is this date format? Let's see. So date format, they have said, they have said that if you specify zero, you have to write the epoch time. And if you specify one, then you have to write the date format. That is YYYYMMDD. Now, what is this epoch time? Now, this epoch time is a numeric number, which keeps increasing after every second. So right now it will be a different number. After that, it will be a different number. So you can just Google it, you know, what is epoch time so you'll come to know more about it so what fires api is doing they are not giving us data in normal yymmdd format they are giving the data in epoch format okay so there are there are two things you can do either you can send the epoch time or you can send the string in yyymmdd format so any one format you can send so if you write here a zero so you have to send the epoch time if you write here one, then you can send it in YYMMDD format. Okay, so for simplicity, we will be using one. So I'll go here and I'll just change this date format to one. So once I change this to one, the benefit is in the next two argument, that is this range from and range to, in both of them, I can send this type of data. You know, I can specify YYMMDD format. So I'll just copy this and I'll just paste it here. That is range from argument. And I will copy this also. And I will paste it here. So let's change the date a little. So I'll change this to 2022. This will be 11. And this will be 01. And here also let's change it. Change this to 2022. This will be 11. And this will be 3. Then the last is a count, count some count underscore flag. Okay, what is this? We just need to specify one. Okay, we don't need to do anything else. So yeah, I've done everything. And then finally, I have to pass this data into my fires.history function. Okay, so this is what I have to do. So I've already done it here. So let's run this code and see what I'm getting. So in the next line, I'll just write as data to see the output. 
So you see, I'm getting a dictionary. Okay. If you see this dictionary, uh, first there is this uh, uh, key value pair that is S colon. Okay. Then you have candles within the candle. You have a list. It's actually a list of list. Okay. In list of list, the first list is like this. So what are these things? First is the time. So it's not a normal YYMMDD time. It's an epoch time. Then you have the open value. This is the open value. This is high, then low, then close, then uh, the volume. So these are all the things that you get whenever you call this history function. Okay. So you get everything in your candle uh, key, every, or, or whatever you get in the candle key is uh, the candle data. Okay. Now what we want to do, we only want the candle thing. Okay. We don't really want these two things that is S equal to okay and remaining. We only want the value of this candle. So what I'll do, I'll just take the S data candle and I'll put it in a data frame. So finally, I'll get a data frame like this. So in this, you can see I have the column name as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the row name are also starting from 0, 1 till it going, it is going till 224. And what would thing I have? This is like the time, epoch time, and this is open, high, low, close. The first is I will change the column name. So this is how you change the column name. You write as data dot column equal to whatever name you want to write. You can write it here. So I've changed it to date, open, high, low, close volume. Now, after doing that, let's see how my data looks like. So I'll just write as data and I'll run the code. Now, this is how my data looks like. I've changed my column name. The next step is I want to change this epoch time. So you know that this entire column is an epoch time. We need to change it in something that we can understand. That is, you know, normal YYMMDD format. So what I'll do, I'll use the two date time function. So in pandas, we have a two date time function in which you have to specify what you want to convert and how you want to convert. So this S data, I want to convert this date column into our normal uh, date format. So this is how the code is going to look like. So if I run the code, I'm going to get output like this. So previously I had the epoch time right now. I have the proper date format. So this is something I can understand, but there is one problem in this data. This date that you're seeing in front of you is a UTC date. If you're dealing with UTC, then it's not a problem. But if you're dealing with IST, that is Indian standard time, then you need to change this. So how to do that? So these are the two lines of code that you need. Okay. So I'll use this TZ underscore localize UTC to have to convert it into Asia Kolkata. That is our Indian standard time. And I have to apply it on the S data. So finally, my data will look something like this. So you can see that my starting date is 1101 and it is 915. So the market started 915. So the first is 915 and it keeps increasing. Okay. Second is, uh, you know, 20, then we have 25. Now this, these are what, these are all five minute data. Why? Because if you notice here, if I scroll up here, I have specified five since I've specified five. So I'm getting five minute candle. So let's scroll down. Okay. So this is what I have got. Okay. So everything is there. I have date in proper U uh, IST format, then open high, low, close and volume data. Now I need to change the index right now. This index is zero, one, two, three. Let's make our date as an index. So I just need to call the set index function. And if I run this code, now my index is date after that. So this is how, you know, you can get the data, historical data. So let me uh, do some edit and show you how I can get something else. So let's say that you don't want five minute candle data, but you want uh, 15 minute candle data. So what changes I'll do? I'll just, I just need to change here 15. Okay. So if I do this and if I run all, okay. And if I scroll down here, so you see now I'm getting 15 minute candle data. Okay. You see every, uh, further row is increased by 15 minutes. So if you want daily data that can also be done. So all you have to do is change this to D now from where did I get to know all this? So everything is written here. Okay, so if you want one minute, write one, then daily D, this is how you have to do it. Okay. Now, uh, if let me just run it and show it to you one more time. So if I scroll down and if I go here, you see, this is how my data looks like because I'm only getting the two days data, daily data. So I only have two rows in my column. Now let's say that you want a range of candle. Okay. You want the candles from one start date to one end date. Okay. Now, instead of sending the date in string. So if you remember here, we are sending it like this, you know, in, in the string we have, we are just writing 2022 dash 11 dash one. So we can also use the date time, 
uh, date class to send the dates. So let me show you how you can do it. So here what I've done, let me scroll up. Okay, so I'm using the date uh, like date class from the date time library. And in that we have this today function. So what today function will give you, let me show you. So I'll just add a new code and I'll just print this much. So this is date time. Okay, so it's a date time object and it is it represents the current date. Okay, now let's say that I want 10 day previous to current day. So I can use the time delta function from the date time library. So I'm going to get another date that is previous to current date, 10 day previous to the current date. So I want two date. One is the current date and one is 10 days prior. So this is what the code is going to look like. Well, F represent the uh, past date and the P represent the current date. So if I run the code, this is the 10 days previous date and this is the current date. So I've got both the date. Now I just need to add both the thing here. Range from I have written F and range to I've written P. So there are two things you can do. Either you can manually write it, you know, in a quotes, or you can use the date time library too. All right. So if I do this again, if I run the code, I'm going to get similar type of output. So now this is how you can get historical data. Now there are a few problems in this. Let's try to understand what are that, what are those problems? Let's say that I want 50 days data. Okay. If I change this 50 day and if I run this code, and if I run this code, you see, it is giving me the output. But what will happen if I try to access lots of data, like I want maybe, you know, 500 days of data. Now, it is not possible for the server to send so much of data in single go. They have some restriction on the server. So see, if I run the code now, you'll see it is going to throw an error. You see, it is throwing an error. So this is one limitation of the server that at a time it can only send some candle data. It cannot send entire, you know, whatever you want. So how do you solve this problem? So you can try it on your own. Try to see if you can solve this problem. That is you want like maybe one year, two year, three year of data. How do you get it? You can try it on your own. If you're not able to uh, do it, you can watch my pre next video in which I'll explain how you can get as much data as you want, any stock you want. So everything is possible. You just need to do some uh, minor changes and you will be able to get it. So now we have seen how we can get the historical data. Now, whenever you try to fetch the data, there are some limitation on the server. The limitation is that if you try to fetch more than one year of data, that is daily, uh, daily candle data more than one year, then it is going to throw an error. Similarly, if you try to fetch minute by minute data, and if you try to get more than 90 days of data, again, it is going to throw an error. Now, these are some limitations that are put on the server so that, you know, uh, it won't get very heat up from the server side. So how do we solve this problem? So there is one approach that I have. We can use this approach. So what we will do, let's say that you have a starting date that is this 2012 and you have an ending date that is 2015. Now this is two years. What we will do, instead of getting the entire data in one go, which is not possible, we will break this entire date into small, small part. We will take our starting date. We will add 60 to it. Okay, so we have one uh, frame of time. Then we will again add 60. Again, we will add 60. We will do this till we reach to our ending date. So if we follow this process, we will be having different dates, each having a span of 60 days. So I have written the code in this. I've written a simple while loop. So first I have the start date. I've taken any random date and I've taken the end date. Now the difference between the start date and the end date is more than a year. It's almost two years. Then I'm writing a simple while loop. Uh, the condition is while start is less than equal to end and within the while loop i'm just adding 60 to it whatever start date i have i've added 60 again in the next loop again i have added 60. so i followed this process and i've got this as an output so here you can see this is the starting date added 60 then again starting date added 60. so in each iteration i'm getting two strings one is a starting and one is the ending which is having a span of 60 days now, all we have to do is within this while loop, we have to fetch the data. Now, instead of fetching it one go, we are going to fetch it multiple times. So if I run this code, I'm going to get this data frame. Now, if you look at this data frame, this is what we needed. Okay. All the two years of data. Now I just need to convert it, convert this epoch time into normal date time. And this is how the output is going to look like. So my starting date is 2019. It's a 50, it's a one minute candle data and the ending is 2021. 
So finally, we were able to fetch the entire two years of data. Now, if you want more than two years, you know, maybe you want 10 year, 15 year. So that is also possible. You just need to change the starting date and end it. The code will still work the same. Now, what I've done, I've made one file called as st.py and this I have added uh, both the code. So first I have made a function that is fetch OHLC. So this will give you the limited data. It is only going to fetch once. Then I've made another function that is get history. Now this function will give you as much data as you want. So all you have to do is specify how many days you want. So here I've specified 2000 days. So what this function will do starting from today till the 2000 days back, the previous uh, days, it is going to give me all the data. Okay, so if I change this to 3000, so it is going to give me 3000 uh, days of data. And you can specify what type of resolution you want. You know, you want daily data, you want minute by minute data, 15 minute, uh, 30 minute, whatever you want, you can change this and this function will give you the data.